What is going on everybody? So today I wanted to make a video talking about old tank syndrome. What is old tank syndrome? Well, basically it's a, a tank that's been up for five plus years and it's basically hit a wall. So your, your fish, your coral, all those stop thriving and, and you basically plateaued. And not only have you plateaued, but you start reverting back. You might start seeing tissue regression in your coral. You'll start seeing algae blooms and just the overall environment and condition of your tank starts to deteriorate. Why is this happening and is it avoidable? Well, I have two different tanks that have been up for close to 10 years. And I wanted to show you guys the difference on how we approach these tanks and show you one that's doing extremely well and show you one that is not doing great. There's a reason behind that. So I'm gonna pack up, get in the van, and let's go to the first tank. So here we are at the customer's aquarium and you can tell just by looking at it how old this tank is. I mean, it's gotta be pushing 10 years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we did not set this tank up. This, we picked this account up uh, fairly recently and you can just tell by the plumbing how old this aquarium really is. Now, one thing I want to point out is you can just tell uh, just right off the bat how dirty the sand is. There's a lot of detritus that's just sitting on top of there. There's some black cyanobacteria. The rocks are just covered in uh, just soot. And there's just no water movement at all in this whole area. It's just like stagnant and it's not, there's no water movement. Everything is just very stagnant and there's no place for that all that detritus and fish waste and extra food and whatnot to go. It's all just kind of sitting on top of the sand there and falling on top of the rock. And it's just broken down organics that not even cleanup crew will touch or eat. Uh, and you can just look at the sand bed and how exhausted it is and the, and the rocks. There's no coralline algae. There's, there's all different types of green algae, bubble algae, and different types of cyanobacteria, as well as some vermitted snails. Uh, like the little cobwebs from the vermitted snails on there too and you can just take a close-up look at the rocks and just see they're just they just look terrible uh, the one thing i'll say is the anemones in this tank seem to be loving the uh they seem to be doing very well this wasn't always the case uh, they were not doing too well when we first got this aquarium as a matter of fact all these corals looked horrible when we first got this aquarium uh, we've got it to the point now where the corals are actually starting to make a comeback. They're actually starting to come out and, and, and um, be more vibrant. These clove polyps, we didn't even know they were in this tank, but because the tank is kind of getting a little bit of love and a little bit of maintenance, uh, you're starting to see things pop up. Like all those anemones in the back have shown up. This cabbage coral is looking healthier than it's ever looked. So it's taken us a lot of hard work to get to this point. This waving hand anthelia, although it's an invasive coral, it's still doing very good and it helps, you know, filter out the tank, which is always a benefit too. There's not a heavy bio load in this aquarium, but you know, the fact that these corals are looking healthy and, and, and are starting to grow is a good sign for us. And there's even some pallies back here, which are nothing too great. We didn't even know these were in the tank until we started like really doing regular maintenance in here and they started to pop up and started doing a lot better. Even this green star polyp is, is like starting to come back so everything looked dead when we first got this aquarium and now to see things coming back and some life back in the tank really lets us know we're headed in the right direction but we're still there's there's still so much that needs to be done in this tank and you know i've look at this power head this is how covered just with a bunch of gunk and it's way undersized for this size tank this is too small of a power head it's the only power head in the tank and it's just way too small along with the fact that whoever like you can just look from here the side glance look at the tank look how bunched up everything is see how that there's no room for even water to flow back there and kind of get those dead spots to get all that dirt and detritus out of your aquarium it's unfortunate and whoever escaped this tank originally didn't think really long term because everything's so bunched up here there's no arches or anything there's no way for water to kind of flow it's not it doesn't breathe very well uh and, and just one power head and just a very weak return pump. You can see that water is barely coming out of there. It's just not enough to, to keep things, uh, you know, moving and keeping detritus from settling and, 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 and making the filtration work. And if you look down here in this felt in the um, sump area, it's not the best filtration to begin with. You know, I would definitely recommend some upgrades here. It got an old school light. We got a, we got a five gallon bucket that's used as a top off, which always makes me so nervous leaving that like that. That just, does not feel good but definitely they need some upgrades to their filtration as well now that tank that we just saw is actually in a office building 
which means a lot of people walk in and can see that. So we desperately want to make that tank look good. Like I said, we did not set that tank up. It's a customer that we just picked up recently and we've been doing our best to do water changes and to, to do maintenance and we've seen vast improvements since we started doing that and giving the tank the love that it so desperately needed. We're only there once every month. Sometimes we're not even there once a month. Sometimes we're there once every two months. And that tank definitely needs more uh, regular service than just once every two months, once every month. Now we've advised the customers on some upgrades we'd like to make to the tank. And the most important would be water movement. So that means return pump. That means more power heads in there, new power heads, appropriate size power heads. Just to get some flow into that tank and get that tank, get that detritus up into the water column and, and so we can take it out through filtration. Now keep in mind that tank doesn't even have a protein skimmer on it, which would also help get some of those organics out of the water column. And lastly, I would love for them to have us come out once a week or once every other week to do more regular maintenance to get that tank until that tank gets to where it needs to be. I do think the sand should be removed and we should start with new sand. But if we're gonna be putting all that work into it, I would just suggest a brand new aquarium at that point. I think that tank has seen better days. The seams kind of scare me, make me a little bit nervous. I think we're on borrowed time right now. But that's an example of a tank that has old tank syndrome because of neglect. So our job is to just try to get it to revive it the best we can. Now on to the next tank that has been up for roughly about the same time, but has vastly different results. We've run into the same type of problems with this aquarium, but we've been able to make adjustments and improvements to this aquarium and the proof just like speaks for itself. We've been able to do equipment upgrade. We've been able to do rescaping. We've had more freedom with this aquarium and I think this is a good example of when you put in that time, when you put in that work, uh, we're there once every two weeks and the customers have been really wanting to improve this aquarium. You definitely see a difference. So here are the results. All right, here we are at the other customer's tank and just look at the difference here. First off, look at the sand. You see the difference in the sand? See how white the sand is? There's no detritus, no debris laying on top of it. And this, is, this tank is even older than the one we saw before. Because we're here more often, we're able to service the sand and clean the sand, gravel back the sand more often as well. And I, I, since we uh, got this tank, since we started servicing this tank, the corals have really responded really well to more, a more regular uh, service schedule. You can just see some of these torch corals, these soft corals are just exploding. The growth in this tank is just absolutely insane. Not just the growth, the color is pretty good too. And you can tell how well this tank is doing when you have this huge monopora cap, this red and then this purple that are just taking off. You see the white on the edges there showing growth in the coral. Now I've cleared out this section under over here, allowing the tank to breathe a little bit more, allow more water flow to get through the hard to reach areas. Whoever escaped this tank just had everything piled in. So we're just doing our best to open it up. And look at that star polyp just starting to encrust there. But just everywhere you look, you can, you can see really significant coral growth. And this is because we're able to service this tank more often. Look at, look at the gold on these mushrooms. Look at that bright blue. Like that's some healthy looking discosoma mushroom corals. And now the rock still has a little bit of algae on it and we're working towards getting that better. Like I said, we're here once every two weeks. That's twice a month. Uh, we do our best to get in there. We're gonna add some cleanup crew as well, but the corals have really responded to more regular service. Oh, oh, the other thing I wanted to add is, look at, we have one, a gyre, and then two, and then over here, three different power heads. Look at the surface agitation. We have great movement. Now, the other side of the tank, let's see what else we have here. So we have a more toadstool. That toadstool is starting to spawn off. We have this beautiful cabbage coral that was like dull. When we first got this tank, that was like gray. It's coming back. We have uh, euphelia coral growing. Look at the color on that. Look at the color on this one. So euphelia is doing really well. We have some pallies over here. Look, oh, check this giant clam out. The thing is bigger than my hand, it's, it's insane. But that just goes to show you how old this tank is. That clam is ginormous. Tons of little tube worms growing all on the rock, but, and growing on this, on the clam shell also. It's that so cool looking, uh, gorgeous mushroom right there. But we also opened up this whole area. That was all enclosed. I've been working on clearing that slowly because with older tanks, you want to go slow. I've been taking pieces out of there and opening it up. and. Since I was doing that, I found this little acan coral hidden behind there. 
and that was almost dead. Took that out, now it's doing great. Look at this 24 karat lepto is encrusting like crazy now that I cleared that space up and allowed light to reach it. Um, this little micromusa, look at it, so you can see where it's missing some heads. That was way under there too, I found that, put it out, and now it's starting to recover just because it's able to get some better flow and some better light. So again, like these, since we've opened up the tank, cleared out some rock and doing more regular service, everything is just starting to really take off. I've actually had to split this uh, trumpet coral and break them up into two different sections because it's just, it's growing like, it just won't stop growing. I'm having to frag it all the time. And that blaster right there is sick. I love that thing. That used to be mine. I put that in here with one head. Now it's just like growing like crazy. But you can tell there's even coralline algae growing in some areas now that the rock is being exposed to light and better water uh, quality and conditions. All the zoa heads are open. None of them are closed. Yeah, I'm, I've been really, really happy with the way this tank has been coming along. And like I said, the customers are really willing to uh, have us put in the work to make it better. As far as the fish, we have, you know, blue hippo tangs. We have uh, some PJ cardinals. We have, uh, what else we have? It's yellow chorus wrasse. I believe we have some chromis. Obviously, some chromis are in here. Uh, those be those wrasse are beautiful. Oh, and we put that little uh, bristle tooth, that brown fish right there. That's a bristle tooth tang, a little coal tang. We put that in here as a cleanup crew to help munch on some of the exposed rock. There is also, I'm thinking about putting some antheas in here. I'm trying to convince the customer to throw some antheas. Oh, Midas Blenny. That's a, a really, really cool fish. A little, adds a lot to an aquarium. Now, as far as filtration, we completely changed out their whole filtration. The old service company had in something that was just not working. So we added the refugium over here. We cleaned up the pipe, uh, the plumbing much better. Um, we have an ATO installed here. We have a protein skimmer as opposed to the other tank that didn't have an ATO or a protein skimmer. Just a much cleaner look. Cleaner look means easier access. It means that you're going to most likely service it more and take care of your tank better. And we have dosing even on this tank, which the other one doesn't have. You can just see how dirty that skimmer is just by looking at it. So all in all, oh look, we got a long nose hawkfish. All in all, I'm really happy with the way this aquarium has been coming along. I'm very happy that the customer has decided to um, really put the time and energy and invest in this aquarium. There's a blue jaw trigger over here, hiding in that corner. But they've decided to put in the effort to make this tank better and the results are here. I mean, this tank is close to a decade old and it was on the way out, but we got in here and we were able to clear up some rock and uh, more regular service and this is what you get. All right, in conclusion, after we just seen the difference between those two tanks, what I come away with is you need to make the necessary upgrades to your equipment and you still need to do regular maintenance and tank husbandry. I know there's a lot of people who say, well, your tank is kind of mature now. It's, it's been up for a while. It's its own little ecosystem. Just let it ride and it'll be fine. This is not true. There's a lot of people that say, I've had my tank for 10 plus years. Never, I don't do water changes anymore. I never do water changes. I still recommend doing small water changes. It's very important to get those it's very important to get those broken down organics out of your system. They're basically just a nutrient bomb that's just waiting to explode. If you maintain your tank and make the necessary changes, there's no reason why you should run into anything like old tank syndrome. At least that's my perspective with dealing with older tanks. I would love to hear your opinions down below in the comments. Have you ever experienced a tank with old tank syndrome? All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one.